What's going on everyone? Today I'm here with something new. This is the TiVo Tornado 3D printer. And if you've been thinking about getting into 3D printing, this may be a perfect machine for you. This has got a large build volume and a really low cost. You can get into this printer for around $330. Now I've owned a bunch of different 3D printers, picked up my first one in around 2011 or 2012, and I couldn't be without one since then. But being that this thing had such a low price point compared to what I'm used to, I was a little bit concerned about the quality of the prints and just the quality of the build. But after having it for over a week and having it basically printing nonstop, I'm extremely happy with what they provided for this cost. Now, if you're not familiar with 3D printing, I'll just kind of go over some of the basics of this machine just to give you a little bit of a point of reference. Now, there's a number of different styles of 3D printers in the way that they actually move the hot end of the printer around. This one uses a motor mounted on the side to slide the hot end back and forth across this gantry. There's a motor on the back that actually moves the entire bed forward and backward, that's your Y axis. This is your X axis. And then the Z axis is controlled with a motor down here in the bottom that turns a lead screw in the back that actually raises this whole gantry arm up these side supports. Now this is an FDM style printer, which means that it feeds a plastic filament through an extruder, through a hot end, and that actually deposits it onto that heated bed that this printer has. Now, many printers don't have a heated bed. This one does, and this heated bed is AC powered rather than DC powered, which is most common. The AC power of this one actually means that it heats up much faster than the DC printed beds that I've had in the past. Now, like I said, I've had this printer over a week. The TiVo Tornado actually has a really large owner's base with a ton of different people who have come up with simple modifications or tweaks that the printer can basically make itself. So when I picked it up initially, I did a bunch of research and since then I've printed a number of little upgrades to make this thing perform even better. I printed a Y-axis motor support which goes on the back, kind of goes around the motor itself and just supports it so that when it's turning the actual belt that moves the entire carriage back and forth, it makes sure that the motor doesn't have any flex in it so that any power that it's transmitting is not going into actually moving the motor and instead moving the carriage. I also printed a support for the AC power wires that go into the heated bed. They are not supported from the factory and with this printer moving back and forth, back and forth over and over and over thousands or tens and hundreds of thousands of times, depending over the lifespan of your printer, they could eventually become weakened at those connection points. So simple little modification to help solve that, relieve some of that stress. The other thing that I did and the biggest performance increase by far was I printed a new style fan shroud that goes around the hot end. Now for this, I did have to purchase a new blower fan for the top. I did purchase a 24 volt blower fan so I could splice it directly into the original power lead on the printer. But once I upgraded that fan for just a few dollars, it really improved the print quality on this printer. In the description below, I'll put a link to all of the parts that I actually printed to get this thing performing even better. Now, while I was doing the research on this printer, it does appear that TiVo has also continued to improve the printer itself over time with the control board on the inside and then different things like the nice glass top heated bed that you see on this model here. For the price, I'm definitely surprised by the print quality that it has. Comparing it to prints that come off the other printer in the shop that cost over five times as much as this printer, and the prints on this are just as good. Now, if you're into RC and you're thinking about getting into 3D printing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this printer as kind of the subject of a series. I'm gonna go through and do a project using this printer. I'm gonna tackle the OpenRC F1 project. If you're not familiar with it, it's basically a completely 3D printed RC car. And I'm just going to use that as a good base to show a lot of different examples of 3D printing. And in the end, we're gonna end up with an RC car but you wouldn't need it to be the TiVo Tornado. You could use any 3D printer with you know, similar capabilities at least. The OpenRC F1 car does have a decent size to it, so you are going to need to have a decent sized bed to print that. But no matter what printer you're using, what I'm going to do is kind of go through some of the software that I use to do 3D prints. I'm not gonna go through the CAD side of the software. This is 
just going to be on the operation of the actual printer and the slicing software that you use to control it. So no matter if you just wanna 3D print your own scale accessories, or you wanna go full into printing your own plastic hard bodies, maybe this series will give you just a little bit of insight into what it takes to do that or if you're just kind of on the edge and can't decide if you really want to jump in and put the investment into a 3D printer, maybe this will help you make that decision. I'll add the links below for everything that you see here, any of the little mods or upgrades that I've done so far and links to some of the videos explaining some of those mods as well. So with that, if there's anything specific that you guys want to learn about during this upcoming series, make sure to drop that in the comments below and I'll try and cover as many of those topics as I can. So with that guys, thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell if you wanna see future updates on what we do with this printer and how we conquer this new OpenRC F1 project in the future. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you on the next one.